Today we're starting a brand new sermon series entitled Voices. Voices. Because whoever you have leased your ear to will be instrumental in your development or instrumental in your demise. And one of the things that I'm very passionate about is I believe nature can preach to us. Okay? So one of my favorite TV stations is the Animal Planet and the Weather Channel. And I discovered this about these birds. There's a particular bird called a songbird. Can I get everybody to say songbird? Songbirds actually have the ability to learn their song while they are still in the egg. These birds are in the egg and they can hear their mother, whatever the song is, or their brother singing this song. You should research it. And they can learn their song while in this confined, compact place. It's something about what they hear on the other side. It's something about what they hear on the other side that begins to make them get curious. What is this I'm hearing on the other side of this shell? Make it make sense. What is this I'm hearing on the other side of this addiction? What is this I'm hearing on the other side of this abusive relationship? Some of us, you are in a compact and a confined place. And my prayer is for the next few weeks, you will hear a voice on the other side that will give you enough confidence to start pecking. Maybe I should start having a devotion life. Maybe I should start having a prayer life. Maybe I should start serving because this place that I'm in is a little too small for me. And there's something that I'm hearing on the other side. Can I get somebody to say the other side? The other side. So we have to understand this. Before we even pray, I, I want us to understand this. Your ability to hear, not just hear, but hear and respond. Because it's one thing for you to hear the word. It's another thing for you to respond to it. Your ability to hear and respond is tied to your breakthrough. The songbird teaches us that. Our ability to hear and respond is tied to our breakthrough. And I'm not just talking about this churchy stuff that you heard, your breakthrough's on the way, and if you sow a seed, and you have, I'm not talking about that. Preaching like that actually irritates me because I'm like, okay, why does every breakthrough have to do with an earthly upgrade versus spiritual development? How about you're going to experience a breakthrough of stop cursing people out? You're going to experience a breakthrough of keeping your legs closed. How about that? I have a breakthrough of stop lying. I have a breakthrough of stop binging Netflix a whole series but can't finish a Bible reading plan. That's a breakthrough. (laughs) That's a breakthrough. Breakthrough. Your ability to hear and respond. Somebody say respond. Is tied to your breakthrough. Your ability to hear and respond is tied to your sanity. Your ability to hear and respond is tied to you avoiding counterfeits. Counterfeit offers, counterfeit people, counterfeit opportunities, deception. Because hear me, deception is a predator's disguise. And con artists speak fluent in deceit. Did y'all hear what I just said? I've been up here, what, three minutes? <laughs> Deception is a predator's disguise. And con artists speak fluent in deceit. With everything in our world becoming obsessed with artificial. <laughs> artificial intelligence. My prayer has been for the last four weeks, God, we don't want to become people who are obsessed with artificial. Help us become authentic. Not artificial, maybe it's just four of us. That like, I don't want artificial, I want authentic joy. I want authentic peace. I want authentic clarity. I'm not just posting for likes, I'm trying to be a light. I want authentic. I want authentic. I want to really experience and know God for myself. Our ability to hear and respond is tied 
to peace on the inside. I'm talking about an inward stillness. Hear me. The reason some of us, the reason your anxiety is so high is because the less I know I am, the more worried I am. Y'all didn't get it. Let me say it to the side. The less I know I am, Yahweh is the I am that I am. The less that I know I am, the more worried I am. Our ability to hear and respond is tied to injury prevention. Injury prevention. Simply put, there's some pain you won't feel when you could hear God's voice. And a lot of pain we're experiencing is because we are spiritually deaf. Our friends are spiritually deaf. What we binge is spiritually deaf. So we can't hear heaven and then we mislabel God as silent. Maybe it's not that God is silent. It's just that you've already decided what you want him to say. Maybe it's not that God is silent. It's that you're surrounded by devils that agree with what you want to hear. <laughs> and so when you actually get a word from God, we label that as hating. Yeah. Ooh, this series going to be so, so good. Your ability to hear and respond is tied to injury prevention. It can protect you from wolves. See, Jesus told us this in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 15, he informs us, wolves won't come to you looking like wolves. I could discern a devil. Okay, devils don't come looking like devils. They come as an angel of the light. And we should be spiritually grown enough to where the enemy can't get us with stupid stuff anymore. It has to look like God. He's the master of disguise. Say it backwards. He disguises himself as the master. He says, listen, wolves won't come to you looking like wolves. They're going to come to you dressed as sheep. They're, they're going, somebody said, tailored, suited, all of it. They're going to come to you looking like sheep. And I want to already give you points. Wolves, when they hunt... When their pack is going about hunting, they really look for these four traits in whatever they're hunting. Number one, isolation. I don't do people, okay? <laughs> they look for the isolated, the immature, that's young, the weak, or the injured. I don't do people. You are a great target for a wolf. They look for the isolated, the immature, the weak, or the injured. But God put this on my heart, y'all. I don't want my people to be spiritual babes forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be a baby at this church too long. You can come that way. That's fine. Come as you are. We mean that. Certain churches say that, but don't mean that. You come as you are, but God does not desire for you to be a babe for years. Amen. Can I mess y'all up? Okay, preaching milk after a while will be contributing to your malnourishment. Yeah. 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 If I keep on preaching milk, I'm actually contributing to you being spiritually malnourished. You're not supposed to be 16 years old still drinking breast milk. You're not supposed to be 27 and 38 years old still on breast milk. That's when you were six months. You're not supposed to be 72, 48, 27 still on breast milk. That's when you were two months old. Hell loves the immature. And so what I've discovered is many times what he attempts to do, the assault attempt on the believer is to keep you in the same grade. I want to keep you in the same grade because... Hell knows I could deceive with ease the immature. I'm going to keep on going. The assault attempt on the believer is to keep us stuck in transition. We don't embrace the season of being cocooned because you got used to crawling. 
Your friends crawl just like you. Everybody you hang with crawls just like you, but God says, okay, let me cocoon you for a season where I can give you wings to fly above what you used to crawl on. But when we don't embrace the season where God is trying to train our ear, hell knows. I could deceive with ease those that are immature. Here it is. The assault attempt on the believer is to keep you fighting the same battle. You've been battling porn for 10 years? Ooh, it's getting real quiet in here. See? See? You, you and your wife been having the same issue for nine years? Can I go a little deeper? Hell uses similar battles to rob you of time. That, that's it. To rob you of time. Deception. The agenda of deception is to steal unknowingly. You are a good deceiver when you can steal and they don't know it. I'm trying to steal your time because right now your gift is relevant. But there will become a time when autumn hits your life and fall hits your life. That's supposed to be when you can relax because during spring and summer you are grinding and you are pushing the kingdom agenda. But now when you hit the fall of your life, you're creating runways for people behind you. If I could steal that energy, if I could steal that passion, you don't even know I'm trying to get you to waste your time. I want to keep you... Immature. Listen, I, I can't do a lot of preaching today. I have to do a lot of teaching. I really can't preach about hearing the voice of God. I have to teach us how to hear the voice of God. Why else do you think one attribute of the word of God is referred to as a sword? It cuts. It convicts. When a baby is born, you cut the umbilical cord. Because what used to sustain you can't sustain you at this level. The conviction is hitting you because God's trying to take you to another level. I can't take you into another level when you're still having that umbilical cord of addiction or that umbilical cord of people pleasing or that umbilical cord of that alcoholism. I have to cut that, convict you, so I can take you to another dimension in me. If I was a note taker, I'd write this down. Then we're going to pray. Deeper levels of spiritual growth is reserved for the seeker, the hearer, and the doer. Everybody who said at the beginning of this year, I'm going to grow spiritually. Okay. Deeper levels of spiritual growth is reserved for the seeker, the hearer, and the doer. And my prayer is that similar to that songbird, you will hear a voice that you could identify as your good shepherd that will strengthen you and encourage you to let something go so that you could hear clearer. Sometimes when the songbird won't hatch and it hears his brother and sister sing, that's what it took for that songbird to recognize what are they singing about. And I think right now we need to pause for the cause of giving God a praise that might be for a brother and sister that's still in the egg. You don't know that this praise may not be personal, but it is communal. If they can hear you're free, if they can hear that you're delivered, if they can hear that you broke it, if they can hear that you're no longer addicted, if they can hear you don't need to hook a bar, if they can hear you don't need your bullet, if they can hear you don't need fornication, if they can hear you have peace, maybe they will begin to pack. Sometimes your yes is for somebody else's deliverance. Father, in this moment, we worship you and honor you as our good shepherd. Just like I prayed privately, I now pray it publicly. Anoint me as your oracle, the soundtrack, the PA system of heaven. Not for myself, but so that people, your people, can hear you. We are living in a time where artificial intelligence is so rampant that we have settled for artificial Christianity. 
And my prayer, God, is that you will heighten, unclog our ears so we could hear when you say stop. We could hear when you say move. We could hear when you say go. All of this means nothing if you are magnified and not glorified. So we're asking that you do it. And everybody who agrees with that prayer would just shout in the room, amen. amen. Are y'all ready for this? Amen. Church family, we are launching a brand new sermon series entitled Voices. And if I were to be honest with you, quite frankly, I believe that this is possibly one of the most important, vital, injury preventative sermons series that I've ever preached. No cap. <laughs> like this, this series is so important, I had to step back for two weeks. We could have we went to, from love is straight into voices, but I said, no, I want to step back to make sure I'm hearing clearly. I want to step back so that I can recharge and refuel myself because I'm young enough by the grace of God to recover. Amen. But I'm old enough to have witnessed spiritual pioneers go before me that kept going when they should have stopped. Yeah. And that taught me a valuable lesson. And that is fatigued hands always produces fatigued ears. Fatigued hands, you're serving, you're grinding, you're working. Fatigued hands produces fatigued ears. And it's dangerous to have access to a pulpit when I'm fatigued. Because I will preach out of my exhaustion versus preaching out of Holy Spirit inspiration. And I want every sermon that I preach to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. So I said, God, I need to step back. So that I can hear you clearly. I want to help us for the next several weeks be able to hear God for yourself. Amen. I was having this conversation with my wife. I'm like, why do churches not preach on this more? And we're both like, you know what? I'm fully convinced if more people knew God's voice for themselves, certain churches that have big followings that aren't saying nothing will lose members. And the reason we don't teach you how to hear is because if you hear, you'll stop listening to me. <laughs> so the fact that you're biblically ignorant is to my advantage. So now your ignorance is helping the prophet make a profit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Somebody say voices. voices. Everything in our culture is starting to get obsessed with artificial. Artificial intelligence and artificial lips and artificial hips and artificial breast and artificial backside and artificial eye color and artificial hair. You almost don't know what is real. <laughs> Look, but the more artificial gets normalized, the more deception is easier to achieve. More deception is easier to achieve. And I'm like, okay. God, help us to become people who have spiritual intelligence to such a degree where we can absorb, we can observe, but not absorb. Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. We can observe it, but not absorb it. Yeah. I observe what culture deems as love, but I don't absorb that because that's not Bible. Yeah. No judgment. I observe it, but I'm not absorbing it. Yeah. I observe what culture deems as success. But I don't, I don't absorb that because I understand Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 10 tells me that there is a task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. So success for us is being occupied with that God-given task that he gave you. Amen. For some of us, the most successful thing you can do in this season of your life is heal. Amen. God, when you going to do this? No, I need to heal your mind though. I need to heal your mind. You can't hear me because your mind is so hurt. And that's success for you. I'm going to therapy. Every day, every weekend, that's what I'm going to. It's expensive. No, it's an investment. And that might be success for you. Everybody's definition of success is different because everybody's task that God has given them is different. The only similarities that we have is it's all made for the glory of God. It's all made for the glory of God. And if this be true, and if artificial is becoming the norm, hear me, you and I cannot afford to have ears that can't hear and hearts that can't discern. Yes. 
Everybody has a podcast. Everybody has a word. Some of us not a word, it's just noise. Everybody has a Facebook Live. Everybody has threads. Everybody has a YouTube channel. We are dealing with an overwhelming amount of access to microphones, so everybody has something to say. And you're telling me you're not going to be cautious with who you lease your ear to? <laughs> I got to have a heart to discern. God gave us this series to increase our discernment. You must know my voice. What is discernment? It is the ability to see the thing behind the thing. Discernment is the ability to have a spiritual diagnosis on opportunities, people, and offers. Can I mess y'all up? When you have discernment, you can treat people right. Yeah. <laughs> How? When you understand that you wrestle not against flesh and blood, you can get that action was influenced. That wasn't just you. I'm not going to treat you out of that action. I understand who influenced it. Discernment. Somebody say discernment. discernment. God gave us this series to increase our clarity. We must know his voice. God gave us this series to increase wisdom and our decision making. We must know his voice. God gave us this series to increase our accuracy so we can limit injuries. Because prevention is cheaper than repair. Did y'all hear me? Yes. Prevention is cheaper than repair. Uh -huh. Prevention is cheaper than treatment. Uh -huh. See, y'all don't want to talk to me. It's cheaper. Like, it's one thing to come out of a storm. Praise God. It's another thing to have wisdom to avoid it. Okay, thank you for the golf claps. But for the rest of us, is there anybody like, I want every storm I go through to be assigned, not my doing? Anybody? If I'm going to go through it, let it be for my purpose, not my foolishness. That makes sense. It's one thing to go through a storm. It's another thing to have wisdom to get you to avoid a storm. It's one thing for you to have tons of degrees. That's great. You have more degrees than a thermostat. That's awesome. MD, PhD, you have degrees that help you solve problems. But it's greater to have discernment to help you avoid problems. I'm not minimizing ed education, but I'm uplifting spiritual intelligence yeah. to where there's some things I don't even have to go through when I can hear God's voice for myself. Purpose, accuracy. That's when I move accurately in my purpose. I could turn down things accurately and not feel like I missed it because I heard God on it. I could take offers that may not look good to you, but I know God told me to do it. Purposeful movement which has accuracy so that we won't experience emotional, physical, and mental injuries to such a degree to where we're people who can't discern God's voice from a wolf's howl. <clears throat> can't discern the good shepherd from a wolf's howl. I need them to know my voice. I want this series to increase our devotion so that prayer will no longer be our backup plan, backup plan, but it will be our frontline defense. Must know the voice of God. I must know the voice of God. God wants us to have spiritual intelligence to such a degree to where you arrive to this place. The only thing that people could take from me now is notes. <laughs> Somebody got it. The only thing that people are taking from me now is notes. They're not taking my joy. They're not taking my esteem. They're not taking my clarity. They're not taking my passion. They're surely not taking my focus. I'm not going to allow anybody to text me and throw my whole day off because I read his text which threw my whole day back on. The only thing you take up from me now is notes, bruh. <laughs> Somebody say voices. So one of the reasons that I've been beckoning for God, please breathe on this series. Breathe on it to give us biblical principles and biblical teaching. And I'm going to strive to give you strategies and illustrations. I'm going to do whatever God leads me to do 
to sharpen our spiritual antenna where we can hear God's voice for ourselves. But I also understand that one of the multifaceted purposes of the church is likened unto a hospital. The sick come here. Okay? The lost come here. I don't go to church. Ain't nothing but hypocrites there. That's like saying, I don't go to the gym. Overweight people are there. <laughs> we're trying to do something about it. That's why we're here. You know why I'm here. You know why I'm here. Yes, one of the multifaceted purposes of the church is likened unto a hospital. But like I articulated before, everybody can't be sick. There must be doctors. There must be nurses. There must be surgeons. That's leaders, pastors, right? Okay, but hear me. Effective prescriptions eliminate illnesses or discomfort and lower the need of the doctor to mainly checkups, not just surgeries. Herbert, did you hear what I just said? Effective prescription. What is that? Sound biblical preaching. The word of God, effective prescriptions when we take them. That's a whole nother sermon. When we take them, the purpose of an effective prescription is to eliminate an illness and discomfort and lower the need of the doctor to mainly checkups, not just surgeries. You could come here in the ER, but by 2025, you, should, you still should not be in the ER. You come in intensive care, but after a while, you should come out of intensive care so that discipleship and church and small groups, that's my spiritual checkup. Ever so often, I might get injured and need surgery, but that shouldn't be my daily, weekly, monthly. I always need surgery. I'm always broken. What, what is your ability to hear like? Somebody say voices. Voices, 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 voices. voices. Spiritual injuries is imminent when we are sheep that can't hear. It's one thing to not be able to hear. It's another thing when you can hear but don't hear right. That's a whole other sermon in this series entitled, You Got It Twisted. Because the job of Satan is to twist. Remember, old serpent, what do pythons do? Twist. God told me he's my husband. Okay, you got it twisted. God is never going to tell you another married man is your husband. What, he's anointed you to be a house wrecker? You got it twisted. You heard something, but it wasn't God. And for the most part, what many of us do is we forge God's signature to co-sign what we want. And we use God's name to say, God told me, well, you know, my season's up. Well, God told me to start this. No, your desire has you doing this, and you're using God's name to co-sign on it. It's going to be good. It's one thing to not be able to hear. It's another thing to hear. And not hear right. Yeah. It's the worst thing when you can hear, hear right, but still go left. Yeah. See, when we do that, we open the door for correction. Now, I want to preach this right because this is why many times I thought I wasn't saved. Okay. okay? Has anybody sinned and you felt bad about it and felt as though God don't love you anymore? Anybody? Anybody? Rest of y'all great. But well, that wasn't me. I went to like 40 million altar calls. Every, every college crusade, every youth night, every, I felt like I wasn't saved because of what I did or what I was doing. Yeah. And a lot of times it was the way the preacher was preaching it. Yeah. Until I discovered, man, the wrath of God was poured on Jesus at the cross. Okay, so when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior... When we believe in him, those who follow Christ, we get correction, not wrath. Yeah. Oh, this is so freeing. I don't agree with that. I'm going to challenge your theology a lot in this series. Let me give you a Bible on this. Hebrews chapter 12, 
verse 6, it says, Because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. So the proof that God does love you and you are his is the conviction. It is the chastening. See, if I walk down the street and I see a little boy arguing and talking back with his daddy, I ain't going to bother them. That's not my son. If Josiah does it, if Jared III does it, they got to deal with daddy. Because I chasten whose son is mine. Oh, y'all ready for this? So this is problematic for everybody who claims to be a Christian, sin, and you feel nothing. No conviction. This is my life. Do what I want to do. I'm grown. I know God for myself. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I know when there is no conviction, look, also for those who get offended quickly, correction offends you, but sin doesn't. Okay. When correction offends us, we are limiting ourselves from experiencing a level of love from God that he only gives sons and daughters. Because the proof that he loves you is chastening. I correct you because I love you. Spiritual injury is imminent when sheep can't hear. Deception is imminent when sheep can't hear. Here, the consumption of bad theology is imminent when sheep can't hear. We cannot get doctrine wrong and expect to get kingdom living right. A lot of this stuff, ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself. The strongest strongholds that I've ever had to deal with as a pastor, the strongest strongholds is when I'm dealing with somebody's unwillingness to unlearn what they've been taught about the Bible. That, that, that is a strong, stronghold. The unwillingness to unlearn, maybe I learned that scripture wrong. Maybe I learned about the gifts wrong. And the reason we hold on to it so hard is because oftentimes it was given to us by somebody we love, respected, or admired. But just because you love, respect them, and admire them does not mean they can't possibly be wrong have you ever met somebody who's passionate but passionately wrong I know what I'm talking about no bro that's not what the text says well anyway (laughs) it's possible that I've learned it wrong why else would the apostle Paul tell us hear me why else would the apostle Paul tell us in 2nd Timothy Uh, Chapter 2, verse 15, rightly divide the word of truth if there was not a possibility for you to divide it wrong. So good, y'all. It's the strongest stronghold I've ever dealt with. So I want us to consider Jesus tells us in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. When you go down a few verses, To John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. I know them and they follow me. Please don't miss it. My sheep, meaning my elect, my chosen, the ones that I have enabled to hear heaven, my sheep know my voice and I know them. And they follow me. So there are two takeaways that we really can have from this biblical passage of Scripture. If I was a note taker, I would write this down. The first takeaway we can have from this particular text is, number one, what you follow is influenced by a voice. (laughs) My sheep know my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Okay? Okay? So a takeaway from that passage is what you follow is influenced by a voice. Or for some of of us, voice is. What you follow is influenced by a voice. Voice of petty. Voice of wisdom. 
voice of fear, voice of healing, voice of insecurity, voice of guilt, voice of shame, voice of trauma. See, negative thinking is not always a devil or a demon. But watch it. Negative thinking can be a place where devils and demons work from. Because the mind does replay what the heart fears to feel again. And so this is how we traffic in paranoia. I'm so passionate about teaching sound biblical doctrine and getting us to heal. By the way, we're having a pop-up therapy Thursday live. This month, the last Thursday of this month, we're going to have a pop-up therapy Thursday. Isaac and I said, we need to do this where we can answer some questions one-on-one, where we can help. Because listen, pain that has not been healed, we give access to our internal mic. So the way you move is because the voice of pain is at the mic. The way you think is because the voice of trauma is at the mic. The women you chase is because the voice of lust is at the mic. Whoever is at the mic, are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Whatever is at the mic will have the dominant voice in your life and you will follow it. What you follow is influenced by a voice. Hear me, every great fall is a compilation of voices that influenced a decision. Goes the opposite way too. Every great rising is due to a compilation of voices that influenced a decision. And you're telling me you're going to be lazy with who you talk and who you listen to? I know I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but I have to say it. Buffet style Christianity is dangerous. I listen to this, I listen to that, I listen to him, I listen to her, I listen to buffet style. Hear me? And I'm not telling you, telling you this just so that you can listen to me. Listen to whoever edifies your soul, your spirit, and enhances spiritual growth. But the way things are set up in 2023, just like mixing medication can be harmful, so can mixing sermons. So can missing teachers, especially if you're a new convert. I have to be selective on what I eat. I have to be selective where I eat from. Because this pastor tells me this is okay. And then this pastor said this is not okay. I'm confused. But if you don't know the word of God for yourself, every church attendance you do will give you confusion. So you'll leave confused because you don't know God for yourself. I'm not one preaching where I want people to look up to me. I'm a flawed, imperfect man who needs Jesus. If you came from Je- for Jerry, you're going to be highly disappointed because I'm always going to point to God. He's the one that gets the glory. He's the one that's breathing through me. I'm nothing but an imperfect man without the power of the cross. Don't look up to me. Look up to Jesus. Uh, I used to believe in church until this one pastor. That's the problem. You follow the pastor, not Jesus. Is this too real? Buffet style Christianity is dangerous. Your follow reveals your most dominant voice. Whatever you follow. See, I'm glad, like, the dating thing is just ghetto. (laughs) I'm glad I'm married. Seriously, no shade. But the dating scene right now is just ghetto. You better have some discernment. For real. There'll be a whole married man having you at Starbucks. Telling you everything that you want to hear. It's just ghetto. But I'm like, man, if, if that was still my state, I would pay attention to who the person I'm interested in follows. I would. I'm not judging. I'm observing. Just observing. What you follow is influenced by a voice. Number two, knowing his voice requires intimacy. Knowing his voice. If you come to my house right now, you couldn't discern my father's walk from my mother's walk. Why? You don't know them like me. But since I've been in the house long enough, I could tell you who's walking. Right, T.C.? That's daddy. His toes popping. <laughs> That's mama. She walking fast. I could tell 
because I know them. Look, look, Adam heard God walking through the garden in the cool of the day. How did he not mistake that for an elephant, for a rhinoceros, for a giraffe? He was so close to God, he even knew his sound. That's God walking through the cool of the day. All throughout the Bible, if you study it, you will see the word no and new are interchanged with the word sex. Adam knew his wife. She bore him a son. He knew her, and she became pregnant. Therefore, the only way you can know God's voice is you have to be intimate. You might have heard it before, into me see. I have to be intimate with him. That's the only way you're going to know his voice. Not just know his word. Because the devil knows his word. Know his voice and respond. I'm simply suggesting to us, a ear that can't hear must be taught. It must, I don't know where we've gotten this stuff. I just know God for myself. Who taught you? I don't need anybody to teach me. I don't, okay, Jesus says in Matthew 28, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Look, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey. That's the Great Commission. Who discipled you? Who disci we have so many Christian podcasts from the undiscipled trying to make disciples. I'm not judging. I'm observing. We must be taught how to hear God's voice and respond. You know what a personal pet peeve of mine is? When I call my child and they don't respond. Oh, my God. oh that's somebody. <laughs> that was personal for somebody. <laughs> that's, or better yet, I see you. Melody, I'm looking right at you. Melody, I'm not singing melodies from heaven. Melo okay, let me put my foot on the gas even further. I'm looking at you, I'm calling you, and you're not responding because you're distracted by what I gave you. I gave you that iPad. I gave you that gift. I gave you that anointing. I gave you that ministry. I gave you that calling. I gave you that marriage. I gave you that career. I gave you that business. And you're not going to respond to it. Now, if you're like me, after I say melody, melody, melody flowers, I will snatch what has her attention. This is so good. Okay? That man has your attention, not me? Come here, boo-boo. Okay, that money has your attention, not me? Come here. And I'm just a flawed, imperfect dad. How much more do you think God, he's calling you. You know he sees you. You hear him, but you're distracted by what he gave you. That's just a personal pet peeve of mine. If that's not yours, pray for me. Okay? I want us to, to look at this scripture. We're going to park pretty much here. Genesis chapter 22. Is this good? Yeah. Genesis chapter 22, verse 9. To give you a little backdrop of what we're about to talk about, God told Abraham, you're going to have a son. Abraham felt as though God was taking too long, so he created himself an Ishmael. Ishmael was not the promise. Isaac was. So after 25 years, he gets the promise. Now God is testing him with what he gave him. Okay, this is where we're going to hop on. Genesis chapter 22, God informs Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. Okay, Genesis chapter 22, verse 9, it says, Then they came to a place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. 
And Abraham stretched out his hand, took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he said. Do not lay a hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. When I was reading this passage, several things hit my mind. First, the amount of emotions that you must feel when you prayed for something, waited for something, got it, and God wants to see where you give it back. Maybe this is why God can't bless you with a larger platform because what you have now, you won't give back. But as I was studying for the purpose of this preaching presentation, I saw something different. What if Abraham couldn't hear heaven? In this moment, what if he was a man who could only hear ESPN? What if he was a woman who could only hear her favorite music? What if he was a man who could not hear heaven? Watch it. He would have killed what was a test. He would have killed his blessing. Ooh, this is about to come for your throat. What have you killed because you can't hear? I wonder whose marriage under the sound of my voice is dying because you can't hear the Holy Spirit tell you you're wrong. I wonder whose peace under the sound of my voice and the overflow and watching online is dying because you can't hear God saying, this is not my will, it's yours. This is not me, this is you. And because you and I can't hear we're killing blessings that is rightfully yours but when I can't hear the good shepherd for myself I will end up injuring things see a lot of us if we be honest we've injured a lot of Isaacs there are a lot of blessings that God tried to send us that we hurt because you can't hear they just a hater. No, they're a helper. They love you enough to tell you the truth. You cut off somebody who would help you. Can't hear. Injury prevention. Injury prevention. That's the title of this. Injury prevention. What is prevention? Prevention is the action or steps we follow that can prohibit avoidable injuries and unnecessary delays. One more time. Prevention. It is the action or steps we follow that can prohibit avoidable, meaning you don't have to get hurt like this, avoidable injury, injuries or unnecessary delays. Simply put, you can reduce your pain when you can hear God. Abraham. Don't touch the lad, for now I know my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Notice Jesus did not say my lambs. He said my sheep. Lambs are immature sheep. Lambs are baby sheep. They come out the womb toothless, and watch this, their main diet is milk. So good. Right, they missed it. The main diet of a baby lamb is milk. He didn't say my lambs. He said my sheep. Matured people. People who really want me. People who really desire me. People who don't, who recognize Sunday's not enough. I'm not just turning my Bible to Genesis because Pastor Flower said so. I'm going to read tonight. I'm going to read tomorrow. I'm going to read on Tuesday. I have my own relationship. He didn't say lambs. He said 
Sheep. Sheep. And truthfully, sheep and goats look just alike. <laughs> I want you all to see the picture of these, of a sheep and a goat. Which one's the sheep and which one's the goat? Somebody went like this. I don't know any, many, my. All right. What's the sheep? Sheep. Okay, so this is, all right, right. So the sheep's on the right. Anybody think the sheep's on the left? Anybody? Okay. So this is the goat. Come on now, use your discernment. This is the goat. Y'all nervous? I think so. That's the goat. Okay. How did you know that that was a sheep from a goat? The wool. So what it was covered in. Okay. What, what, what else? How did you know it was a sheep? It's ears. Hmm. It's ears. My sheep know my voice. And they... Follow me. When you look at a goat and a sheep, you can see one is covered different. And the other's ability to hear is different. Maybe this is why the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. I, sh I feel like preaching up in here. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me besides still waters so everybody who's a sheep you're like god i need you to lead me when i'm in the valley and i need you to lead me when i'm on the mountaintop i need you to lead me when i'm going through a storm and i need you to lead me when i'm going through sunshine i need you to lead me when i think it's you and i need to lead me when i don't know it's you because if you lead me i will fear no evil for that rod and that staff they comfort me I feel like preaching, I'm trying to teach it. Sheep recognize I need to be led. They are slow, easily frightened, defenseless creatures without their shepherd. But goats, goats, they don't listen. Goats, buck, you ever seen it? Cram, boat. <laughs> Goats think they know everything. Goats don't like discipleship. Goats don't like to be held accountable. Ask a shepherd. When it comes to a sheep and a goat, they have two distinct different natures. You might be able to deceive the person on your row to make you think that you're a sheep, but I'm here telling you prophetically, a lot of us are goats. The problem with Western Hemisphere Christianity is we have goats teaching goats. They don't even sound the same. One goes bad, other one goes mad. They're two totally different. <laughs> Research it. My sheep know my voice. I want y'all to see this. Carl, play this clip where they can see this. I want y'all to see the difference. Where sheep don't listen to what's not their shepherd. I want y'all to see this. You can play a Carl when you whatever. <laughs> They are coming. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Notice that the people before them were saying the same thing. But it was something about his obada oh, that they knew. <laughs> Sheep don't follow the voice of a stranger. Are you following strange spirits? Sage, that's a strange spirit. Oh, I manifest. That's a strange spirit. I came back refueled and refreshed. I don't care if you're mad. That's a strange spirit. Are you a Taurus? Are you Aries? That's a strange spirit. I'm going off the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit. Not to offend any power friends, but I got a real Holy Ghost. And it helps me to discern right from wrong. But look, I don't, man, I'm running out of time. I just want to share this with you really quickly. Lambs have to be taught how to hear. It's similar to Samuel being dropped off at the temple. His mom put him in a position to learn how to hear. One of the most powerful prophets, Prophet Samuel, I want to show us this. 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 4. So this, this, this is Samuel when he's a little boy. Somebody shout lamb. lamb. Okay, he's a little boy. So he's laying in his bed. Verse 4 says, the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me? He said, I didn't call you, go lay back down. And he went and laid down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me? He answered and said, I didn't call you, my son, lay, lay down. Look, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, and the third time. So he rose and went to Eli and said, it had to be awkward by the third time. Here I am. You, you called me? Watch this. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Somebody say lamb. lamb. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant Hears. The prophet Samuel had to be taught. Now, until you know him for yourself, it will sound like the person who speaks the most into you. That's how people tell me, man, I was about to go this, but Jerry, I heard your voice. <laughs> it's okay. Next time, why don't you pray? <laughs> but, but I get it. It's, this is the most dominant voice of God in my life. So I hear something that sounds your voice. It happened to me. I used to hear my mom and my dad's voice. But notice, if he had to be taught, who taught you? There's so much more that I have to go through, but I don't have time. I'm going to just give you these few points. Good thing it's a series. I don't have time, y'all. No. Good preaching leaves you hungry. So, so we'll pick up on it next week, all right? But I, I do want to give you these points because it would be injustice to finish just right there. So we have to learn to process the voices. So first one, the voice of fear. Okay. How do you know if the voice of fear is talking to you? Because it magnifies the hypothetical. That's the voice of fear. If you need help, we're going to be in this for weeks, possibly months, learning how to identify God's voice. The first way you can identify the voice of fear is it magnifies the hypothetical. It always starts by what if. Okay? What do you do about it? You fight the hypothetical with God's historical. His faithfulness, his goodness. All right? Giants are never in the wilderness. They're always in your promise. They're never in the wilderness. They're always in your promise. Why? For intimidation purposes only. I'm there so that you won't pursue. The voice of fear magnifies the hypothetical. Somebody say voices. voices. Number two, the voice of torment. It always comes when you are in blatant rebellion or when you are anointed for a task. The voice of torment is designed to make you be overwhelmed with guilt because of what you know you're doing. Or because of what you will be doing. Wow. Torment. It's designed to blindfold you to how fruitful you really are. Tormented. It's a voice from the enemy. Because hell doesn't want you on fire. I told us this in the Planted series. The reason hell doesn't want you on fire is because when you're on fire, it's a prophetic reminder of Satan's end. Yes. He will be on fire. Yes. So I don't want... You on fire. Somebody say voices. voices. Number three, the voice of guilt. How do you know when guilt's talking? It gives you regret over an action. Yeah. Regret. That's the voice of guilt. Gives you regret over an action. Number four, the voice of shame 
gives you a label from that action. Do y'all see the difference? The voice of guilt gives you the voice of guilt gives you regret over an action. The voice of shame gives you a label from that action. You are a failure. You are an adulterer. You are a horrible person. That is the voice of shame. Number five, the voice of conviction gives you a reminder that you've been made for more. Conviction, this ain't God like. What is you doing, bruh? You know better than doing it. That's God telling you, I made you more than this. Voice of conviction. Last, the voice of God. I have this in four sub points. The voice of God comes through his word, is a call to repentance, a purpose or assignment is given that's about his glory, not yours. And lastly, repetitive confirmation. Okay? Say it one more time. Listen to the series again. I'm kind of rushing because I'm out of time. I'll be able to break them down more next week. The voice of God always comes through his word. The voice of God always starts to repentance. So he's not going to tell you to start a ministry and you and your wife are at odds and fighting. It's not. You should start a podcast. Okay, you just cussed your wife out. So God told you to start the podcast. When I say I'm sorry? Okay. It, it's a call to repentance, meaning turn away. It's God's voice speaks for a purpose or assignment that he's given you that's for his glory, not yours. You could usually identify when it's God because it's something that terrifies you. God's calling me to do this. Okay, most of the most anointed pastors I've met didn't want to do it. Do you know this weight? The amount of attacks? We, we get up here? I never wanted to do this. I hate it when people say that Jerry was going to be a preacher. No, I'm not. I don't want that weight on me. I don't want that responsibility. I don't want to have to stand before God with your blood on my hands. I don't want that. This is not a joke. And that's the problem, I believe. We have more speakers than hearers. Yeah. And lastly, the voice of God is repetitive confirmation. You're going to hear it over and over and over. He's not going to tell you anything new. It's like your GPS. If you put in your GPS, you go into the Galleria. If you stop, <laughs> it's not going to say anything new. The only time the GPS speaks is when it's time to turn. Yeah. Some of us have never heard our next instruction because we don't have now obedience. So my prayer with this series each and every Sunday is to get us in a place where we can know the good shepherd for ourselves. God Please remove all distractions. Unclog our ears from what we want so that we can hear what it is that you're telling us. We recognize, God, that when we first come into the body, we must get disciples so that we could learn. Similar to how Samuel was taught how to identify, I'm praying that you use this series. Our close loved ones, accountability groups, discipleship, Bible, study, small groups to help us to know your voice. Because we are living in the last days. And truly, we cannot afford to try to navigate life and not hear our good shepherd. Lead us. We're asking that you do it. In Jesus' name. And everybody agrees that prayer. Would you say amen? Come up here, girl. Good to have you back. This word bless somebody on today. Oh, so that means it hurt. That means it hurt. If this word bless somebody on today. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap it up for the word of God. Y'all want to hear God's voice? That was a good word, guys. Um, I can remember when I was single living in Oklahoma City. 
y'all, I was really needing God because I was going to 5 a.m. prayer, y'all. And I lived 30 minutes away from my church. But I was so desperate for God at that season in my life. And I remember being in prayer. And I'm, I'm, I'm going in, y'all. I'm just like, yes, Jesus. And I keep hearing something. And I'm like, and it wasn't something necessarily that I wanted to hear. But I kept hearing something. I was like, I'm trying to focus. Like, God, I love you. God, you're worthy. God, I thank you. And I kept hearing something. I'm like, what is, what? No, that, that, can't, that can't be right. God. And so I called my mom about it. And she, I was like, Mom, you know I was in prayer? I sounded real holy. I was in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt, I felt that God was speaking to me about something. And she was like, really? Because she was like shocked too. I was like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> and then when that thing that I was told happened, I was like, oh, wow, that was God's voice. But I would not have heard it if I wasn't seeking God in prayer. Yeah. Right? If I was snoring and slobbering at 5 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> then I would not have had the opportunity. Now, mind you, it wasn't something good. It wasn't something that made me happy. It was actually something that was very hurtful. But God was preparing my heart for it in advance. You see what I'm saying? So when it happened, I was like, oh, okay, God. You were preparing my heart. Because people, people want to hear God tell them, Lord, you know, give me those next lottery numbers, Father. Speak to me. <laughs> Speak to me. Tell me when, when I can start my business, Lord. Tell me, Lord, when you're going to give me a million dollars. Father, speak to me. When are you going to send my husband? Tell me, Lord, my next business plan. You want to hear all that. But sometimes God's voice is like, hey, you need to forgive that person. Sometimes God's voice is like, hey, you know what? You need to work on your character. Sometimes God's voice is like, you know what, your time management is yeah. really jacked up. Yes. So God's voice isn't always what we want to hear, but it's always what we need. Yeah. Amen. And you can only have God's voice and hear his voice through intimacy, like Jerry was saying. Yeah. And you can't have intimacy with God if you don't know God. Yeah. And if you don't know God, that means that you are not his. And he wants you to be his. So if you don't know him and you're in this house and you say, I don't have a relationship with the Lord and I want to have a relationship, this is your opportunity. It's my favorite. Y'all, I missed this part. This is my favorite part of the service. Because if you don't know God, you can have the opportunity to know him as your Lord and personal Savior. You can accept him in your heart right now because he wants you. And he wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. So everybody under the side of my voice, everybody close your eyes and just repeat after me. Say, Father God, Father God in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I need you right now, I need you right now to, save me, to save me, to change me, to, change to, me, wash, me, to wash me, make me more like you. Make me more like you. I, need you. I need you. Walk with me. Walk with me. I, surrender to you. I surrender to you. I confess with my mouth, I with my mouth. and I believe in my heart. That Jesus, that Jesus died, died and, raised and raised just for me. Just for me. So, right now, God, so right now, God, I thank you, I thank you for, allowing me for allowing me to surrender to you. To surrender to you. And I thank you now thank you that, I'm saved. that I'm saved. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Show, me your way. Show me your way. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. And thank you, thank you for being my Lord. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. amen.